A common question on the FAA knowledge test and something all IFR pilots should generally understand involves the concept of DME slant range error. DME is a piece of equipment that measures distance and stands for distance measuring equipment. A readout like this one in the cockpit displays our distance from the station. DME transmitters are located on VOR stations and other nav aids and their frequencies are paired so our equipment automatically picks up both signals. A VOR like this one will be paired with a DME transmitter and could be placed on the field at an airport. The distance displayed by our DME depends on two things, our altitude above the ground and our horizontal distance from the station. Our equipment sends a signal to the DME station called an interrogation. The DME station receives this and sends back a reply. The DME times the round trip of the signals and computes the straight line distance to the station called slant range distance. Here's why both our altitude and ground distance play into what the DME actually displays. If our altitude is 6,000 feet, roughly one nautical mile, and our ground distance from the station is 10 nautical miles, our slant range distance will be about 10.04 nautical miles. Anyone remember trigonometry class? Since the DME reports slant range distance and it's accurate to the nearest tenth of a mile, it'll report 10.0. So as far as we're concerned, the DME is reporting the ground distance to the station exactly. Watch what happens though as we fly closer. At the same 6,000 foot altitude, being 6 miles away in ground distance translates to a slant range distance of 6.08 miles. Rounded up, this will have the DME show 6.1. There's starting to be a difference between what the DME says and what our ground distance, which is what we're really concerned with, actually is. This gets more pronounced as we fly directly over the station. Here, our ground distance is zero, but at 6,000 feet up, we're actually one nautical mile away from the station. So that's what the DME will show. The rule of thumb with DME is that for every 1,000 feet above the ground the aircraft is, slant range error like this can be ignored only if we're flying one mile or more away from the station. So at 1,000 feet and one mile distance, we get a small error, the same thing for 2,000 feet up and 2 miles away, and so on. IFR-capable GPS units can be substituted for DME. Here, we're flying over College Park Airport, and we can use our Garmin 650 to determine our distance from nearby VORs. If we select Nearest and VOR, we can see our distance from the two closest stations, 8 miles from DCA and 11 miles from Andrews. Note that this isn't slant range like with DME, it's ground distance. So those same errors we saw flying low and close to the transmitter won't be replicated with GPS. Standalone DME units are getting rarer these days, but even modern units like the G1000 can display DME distance. Here we see it on the PFD, and this is actually pulling from the raw transmitter data, not the GPS. So even though it's modern, it still has slant range error. It's important to understand what slant range error is and whether or not the distance you're looking at reflects it. For more training insights, head over to the Flight Insight website linked here and in the description today.